The way a sewing machine works, big picture, is that there's an upper thread and a lower thread. When we set up our machine, we're gonna start by taking care of the lower thread. So I'm going to be winding a bobbin. We're gonna take off the removable storage compartment, just slides off like this. We're gonna open the hinged cover and that will reveal the bobbin compartment. We're gonna grab the bobbin case, which is the middle round piece. There's a hinged latch that you can grab onto and inside you'll find an empty bobbin. A bobbin is essentially a baby spool that we're going to be winding thread onto. Your machine comes with several extra bobbins, but if you need to get more, you want to make sure that you get Singer Class 15 metal bobbins. These are the bobbins that are designed to be used in this machine, so you definitely want to make sure you get these because these will help your machine sew the best. I'm going to set the bobbin aside for now and I'm going to go in my storage compartment and find my spool cap. The spool cap looks like this. We're going to use it to keep our thread in place. I'm going to grab my thread I'm using for my project and I'm going to put it on the spool pin, which is this piece back here. And remember, you want to make sure that you've swiveled your spool pin out and away from the machine. I'll use my spool cap to put on the end of the spool pin to hold my thread on. And the first thing we need to do is thread our thread on the thread path for winding a bobbin. And if you look at the top of the machine, there's a little diagram showing you what to do. So step number one is this first stop right here. This is called the pretension. The most important thing about this is that we get the thread behind it and then in between these two pieces right here. So you want to make sure the thread is going in between both sides of this part. Now we're going to find a part that's shaped like a screw, so that's this round piece. This is the bobbin winding tension disc, and you want to do just what it's doing in that picture. You want to go around the screw, and it's very important that the thread goes under the head of the screw. So it should go all the way under, and when you pull on it, you should feel a little bit of resistance. Now we're going to take our thread tail, and we're going to take our bobbin, and we're going to choose any of the holes on the bobbin, it doesn't matter which one, and we want to thread the thread up through one of the holes. So we're going to go in from the inner part of the bobbin and go up and out the top, like that. We're going to hold onto the tail, and we're going to push the bobbin down onto this part, which is the bobbin winding spindle. You want to make sure you push it all the way down. If you don't, you might accidentally wind thread under the bobbin, and we don't want to do that. To tell the machine we're going to wind a bobbin, we're going to push this over to the right, so it pops all the way over to the right. Now we're going to hold our tail up and out of the way, push on the pedal, and the bobbin will start winding. Once you wind for a few seconds, you can stop and trim the tail close to the bobbin because now it's buried so it won't come unraveled. And then you can just keep pushing the pedal until you fill the bobbin. It'll stop automatically. If you're not going to do that much sewing, you can stop before it's full. But if it's your first bobbin, you might as well fill it up all the way. When you're done, you're going to stop winding and undo what you did. So you're going to pop that back over to the left, pull the bobbin off, and cut the tail anywhere to separate it. And there is your beautifully wound bobbin. Once we take care of that, we're gonna set it aside and focus on the upper thread now. Before you thread the upper thread, there's two things that you wanna check. The first is that you wanna make sure the presser foot is up. So remember, there's a, le a lifter, a little white lever right here that lifts and lowers the presser foot. So make sure that that is up. The second thing you want to check is the take-up lever. So we need to actually thread the take-up lever. We need to make sure that that is up all the way in the highest position so we can see it and access it to thread it. When we thread for sewing for the upper thread, let me just unthread the thread from the bobbin winding. Again, we're going to follow the diagrams that are listed and the numbers that show you the sequence of where to go. So the first stop is that pretension part right here. And again, it's very important to make sure that you get the thread in between the two sides of that part right there. We're going to go down in this channel. For number three, we're going to do a U-turn around the number three. For the take-up lever, we want to mimic what this arrow is doing at the number four. So that means we're going to start on the right. We're going to go back, over, and then bring it forward. 
and it's very important that the thread catches in the front of the take-up lever, so make sure you see the thread right there. The last stop before the needle is this thread guide, which is a horizontal bar right above the needle. The easiest way to get the thread in there is to hold it horizontally and just slip it right on top and then bring the tail down like that. To thread the eye of the needle, you can thread it manually front to back or you can use the needle threader to make it a little bit easier on yourself. To use the needle threader, you want to make sure that the needle is in the highest position. So go ahead and turn the hand wheel until you see the needle go to the highest position. We're going to catch the thread around this hook right there, and then we're going to push down and forward on the white portion of the needle threader and bring the thread under the prongs on the right, and then we'll let go. That's going to pull the thread in a little loop right through the eye of the needle. So we can grab that loop and pull the thread the, wet, the rest of the way through, just like that. Our upper thread is threaded now, so now it's time to put our bobbin in. We're going to grab our bobbin case that we had out before, and you want to hold it with the open side facing you and the little finger on the top pointed up at 12 o'clock. Then you're going to take your bobbin and you want to hold that so it's making the number 9 shape with the thread tail coming off. So use your imagination and imagine that this is the stem of the number 9 and the bobbin is the top part. Holding it just like that, you're going to drop it in. And there's a groove on the edge of the bobbin case. So you need to find that groove and you need to get the thread tail right into that groove. You'll pull the thread around and under this metal tab until it snaps into the open space, just like that. So you want to hear it snap, but you also want to visually be extra sure that it's in the center of that open space right there. It's very important. Once you have the bobbin in, you can double check that you put it in the right way by pulling on the thread and it should turn clockwise. Once our bobbin is in the bobbin case, we can just let go of the thread tail. We're going to turn it back around and grab onto that hinged latch to hold it. The bobbin case is going to go in here in the bobbin holder. There's a notch right at 12 o'clock that's going to line up with that finger on the bobbin case. So you want to hold the bobbin case so that finger is pointed straight up and we're going to slide it in until it seats all the way in there and then you can let go of the latch. The very final step is drawing up the bobbin thread. We're going to do that with the upper thread. So we'll hold onto the upper thread with our left hand and we're going to hand crank through one full stitch. So that means we're going to hand crank until the needle goes all the way down and comes all the way back up. When we do that, the upper thread is going to grab the bobbin thread and pull it up as a loop. If you don't see that loop, make sure that you're pulling with your left hand so that there's some tension on that thread and it will pull the bobbin thread right up. You can then grab the loop and pull it the rest of the way through, just like that. We'll hold both tails together and then put them under the foot and towards the back of the machine. And we'll close everything up, so we'll shut our hinge door, put our storage compartment back on, and now we're all set up and ready to sew. Now that we threaded our machine, it's time to do a little test sewing and make sure we threaded it correctly. For our test seam, we're going to choose a regular straight stitch. This is a common stitch for sewing seams, so it's a good one to use as a test. Our straight stitch is stitch number 00, and you can select your stitch by using these arrows but arrow buttons until the stitch number right here reads 00. Your length and width settings will be set automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about it. If you do ever want to change them, you can use the up-down arrow to change the length, and the left-right arrow to change the width. If you do change it and you want to go back to the default, you can just set it back until there's a line under the number. The line indicates that that's the default setting. I have a little scrap of fabric here to test. So to the right of my foot, I have some guidelines I'm going to use. These will help me sew straight and make sure that I stay a consistent distance from the edge. So I'm going to choose to follow the 5 8 or the 16 line. I'll put my fabric under my presser foot. I'm going to lower my presser foot to get ready to start sewing, and then I'll push the pedal. When I get to the other side of the fabric, I will stop. I'm going to lift my presser foot, pull out my test swatch, and cut my threads on the thread cutter on the side of the machine. So here's what we have. 
We'll check the front and we'll check the back and they both look great so we know we threaded our machine correctly. If you sew and your test swatches look a little bit wonky or loopy, if you have loops on your thread or if the backs look loose or um, if there's kind of some thread nesting happening, then that probably means you, means you need to re-thread your machine. So just unthread the top thread and the lower thread, re-thread them and then do another test sewing swatch.